everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I am here with a requested video. I'm talking about baby stuff. So I'm gonna be going over sleep, our toys that we use and like, what we do for baby clothing, our kind of schedule slash routine that we like to do, and then what we do for bathing and skincare. So I'm gonna kind of bring you along as we do some of these things and just kind of show you what we like to use. So I have been getting lots of requests from you guys for baby content, which I really appreciate. And if you're somebody who's here and isn't so interested in the baby stuff, you might just want to file it away and keep it in mind because more than likely you're going to come across somebody in your life sooner or later who does have a new baby and hey, maybe some of this would be helpful for them. You never know. So first let's kind of talk about sleep. So in my three month baby update video that I recently did, I talk a little bit about where he's at with sleep right now, my current baby. And so of course this changes as they grow what their needs are and, and just what their sleep looks like So I've done a few different things when it comes to sleep for babies I kind of tried bed sharing in the beginning and there are some benefits to it, but long term It wasn't really a great fit I just can't get comfortable and sleep well enough and deeply enough when I know that there's a baby there with me So what I typically do is a bassinet next to me. So sometimes there are some handy times to know how to like nurse laying down and how to make that work like if you're dealing with sickness or something like that there are definitely times when bed sharing is so handy and just really gets you through some really tough times but in general for day-to-day -day life I didn't find that it was the best fit for us so I really like a bassinet from newborn to somewhere around four to six months of age is when I'll transition them over to their own bed in another room and that just works best for us. I was very open-minded in the beginning of, you know, maybe I want them in our room longer. Maybe I want them in our bed. I just tried it. That's what I really encourage everybody to do is to, to know your research, know the recommendations, and then just do what's best for you and your family because every family and every baby is different. So those first few nights with a newborn, I did end up kind of holding him a lot and kind of sleeping propped up. That way I didn't really get a ton of sleep, but I don't know. Those are just funny. The first one or two nights after a newborn, and you, you just kind of, I don't know, it's hard to really relax and sleep very deeply because there must be like hormones and different things that are going on that just make it where you want to just be more awake and just watching them and, and all that kind of thing. So that's kind of what I did. I did lay him down some in his best net, some to get some stretches of sleep too, but I really did kind of just hold him a lot and then slept during the day to kind of make up for it. Because also, you know, you, we want to talk about this too. Sleep for mom is important. If mom's not well rested, then everything else is going to be so much harder. So that's kind of, you know, an important thing to think about. So I've been really liking the bassinet setup right here next to me. I have this nice natural Moses basket. I can link this one that I found down below and then it goes on a rocking stand. It's all natural materials, no toxic chemicals or anything used in the materials. The bedding is all organic. I have a really nice natural mattress in it. And then I always try to do organic cotton for his blankets. I have a wool blanket too, a really nice natural virgin wool blanket that I use. And I know that some of these things are controversial, like using blankets for bedding and things like that. I just wanna say, this is what I do. You definitely do your own research, follow what your medical providers recommend, all that good stuff. This is just what I do. So just wanna put that out there. But I do go ahead and use some bedding with them when they sleep. It's always worked great for us. I just try to stick with really natural, safe options when it comes to bedding and blankets and, and clothing and mattresses and all that kind of stuff. And then, so as far as sleep routine, and kind of what that looks like. For the very beginning, I really just let them dictate kind of what they need, nurse on demand, and when they're very new newborns, they will just kind of fall asleep and then you can lay them down and it's not really hard. And then you can get some good stretches of sleep that way. As they get a little bit older and their senses are more developed and they're more aware, then I find that it's nice to be working into a little bit more of a routine to some degree. I still nurse on demand, like when they're hungry, 
unders them. I never try to, you know, force that into any type of a schedule or anything, but trying to have kind of a little routine in mind is helpful, I find. So what I do is I start watching for their sleepy cues, like when they're gonna need to go down to sleep and start getting them into a little routine for that. And then after they sleep, feed them right away. I always try to have the feeding be on the end of when they first wake up and then go about an awake time. And then when they're ready to sleep, then get them sleepy again and lay them down to sleep. So they sleep for a couple hours at a time at first, sometimes longer. And then as they grow a little bit around that two to three month mark, closer to three months, and they start, their awake time starts to be more. And so we start doing different things, trying to be a little bit more interactive with them and things. For all those awake times from newborn on up, I try to have them in different places to kind of mix it up a little bit. We have a little play gym inside of a pack and play with a nice little safe place for him to just lay and look around at toys and things. I do have a couple swings that I'll use sometimes. They come in really handy. I love baby wearing. I do love to wear my babies. I do have to be a little bit careful because I have big babies and when they're little they have to be on the front. They cannot be on the back yet and so all that weight on my front really does take a toll on my back and my shoulders and so I do wear them as much as I can but I'm not one of those people who is able to just wear them from like sun up to sun down like I sometimes hear about. Just my back can't take it but I do as much as I can and I hold them as much as possible because these little baby stages go by so fast. So I do like to wear him a lot. I do have an Ergo carrier, that's my favorite. I find that it offers the most support. Since my babies are so big, I find that the wrap carriers just are not supportive enough. And so I go straight to the Ergo. They make them compatible for newborns right from the beginning. So I love that. So then around the two to three month mark, when they're more aware and senses are more developed, that's when I start gently teaching them to kind of settle down to sleep on their own. And this is usually easier the earlier in the day it is and then it gets a little harder as the day goes on but if I'm consistent I find that they do really well and they learn to just settle down and sleep without having to like cry themselves to sleep and stuff so I will usually nurse them to get them kind of sleepy I don't nurse to sleep I try to not do that since that can lead to you know it's just hard get them so that they're sleepy but they're not all the way asleep and then lay them down in their bed and then they finish drifting off to sleep on their own and I find that that works really well makes it easy easy for me and for them later on when they're a little bit older and it's nap time, they're already used to that. So at this point, around three months, the naps per day can be anywhere from like three to six, just depends on how long or short they are. So I just pay attention to his sleepy cues when he's been awake for a while and then when he starts looking sleepy, we start a little wind down routine and then put him down in his bassinet to sleep. Around four to six months is when I like to transition them to a crib, so I look for a really nice safe or organic crib mattress and I go ahead and use organic bedding there to sheets. I do have some blankets in there with them. Nothing really big and heavy, just some blankets that they like to sleep with. And then I also like these wool sleep sacks. These are so great for when they're a little bit older, kicking around, kicking blankets off. So that way I know that they can stay warm all night. And I love wool because it works well for all seasons. So they can wear these year round. It keeps them at the right temperature, whether the weather is warm or cold. And it just helps, you you know, make sure that they're comfortable, which is good for good sleep. So this kind of depends on the baby. They're all a little bit different with what their needs are and personalities and everything. But in my experience so far, once they move to their crib around four to six months, whenever we just feel like it's time for that transition, then they usually will still wake up once every night to nurse and then on their own. And this has happened at different ages for different kids, sometimes before a year, sometimes just a little after a year, then they'll just stop waking up and then they'll just sleep all night through. So for clothing, I try to stick to natural fabrics. I try to stay away from synthetic stuff. I like organic cotton when I can find it. There's getting to be more and more resources for that, which is really great. I will have links for a lot of these things that I'm mentioning, as many as I can find down in the description box in case you wanna look into any of it. And then, like I said, I have the wool sleep sacks. So organic cotton is primarily what I look for for baby clothes. And when they're little, I pretty much just have them wear sleepers 
all the time. It's just easy. For a baby that's born in summer, then I'll have like, you can get little short sleeve rompers. That worked really well for my baby who was born at the end of August. And the others just live in little organic footed sleepers until the seasons change or they need to wear something a little bit different when they're older. It's just super easy. I like to do zippers instead of snaps. It makes it easy, but I do have some snap ones that I still keep around because I like them. For toys, I like to stick with natural stuff, natural rubber, wood, cloth, stuff like that. We do have some silicone toys. I try to stay away from plastic as much as I can, although it's hard to stay away from it completely, especially as they get older, but I try. And then I try to stay away also from electronic stuff with lights and noises and things. I just try to keep it simple with, you know, open-ended things that they can just kind of hold and chew on and rattle around and stuff like that. So we have a variety of little things, little teething toys and some little animals and things like that. For skincare and bathing and things, I like to follow Dr. Natasha's recommendations when it comes for skincare for my kids and babies. And that is, I usually don't use soap on their whole body to wash them. I just let them, like for my kids, we do detox baths all the time. So we'll have like Epsom salts or another thing in there. And then they just wash with that. And then I will use one of my natural soap ideas for any time they're actually dirty with actual dirt or to wash their hair. Other than that, we just do water. And so we like to filter our bath water. So I definitely do that with babies. I have a small bathtub that I just fit inside our bigger bathtub. If I had bathroom counter space, it would go on a bathroom counter nicely, but we don't have that in our bathroom. So I just put it in the bathtub, put filtered water in there, wash them with the water. And then I do use a natural soap option for hair. I have my nice bars of tallow soap that I make. I like that for washing their hair. And then also another thing that I do sometimes is I make some foaming soap with Castile soap, just really diluted and gentle. And then I use that. I like Dr. Bronner's unscented baby pure. I'll link those recipes down below where I have recipes for my soap bars and my foaming soap if you want to check that out. But that's what I use, just water and then soap kind of as needed. And then for their, for washing their hair, a really gentle, mild, natural soap like that. And then for skincare, again, I keep it really simple, very natural. I try to stick with stuff that would be safe to eat to use on skin. So same thing for babies. An unscented tallow balm is my all-time favorite multi-purpose thing for baby's skin. So it's great for any types of little rashes or skin irritations or even wounds or anything. It's amazing for diaper rash. It's cloth diaper safe. It is really great just for dry skin, moisturizing, like I said, soothing, anything. So I'll do that. As I get older, I might add a little bit of chamomile and lavender to it. But as they're newborn and pretty young, then I just keep unscented tallow balm. Okay, so I think that kind of covers the bulk of our baby setup and routine and just kind of how we do things. I hope that that was helpful. If there's more baby stuff that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment and let me know. And like I've said before, I have more baby videos coming out on when we start solids and how we're going to do that and how we're going to make all the food and all of that good stuff. So definitely be watching for those. Check out that description box down below for links to a lot of the different things that I mentioned as well my other recipes for the soaps and different things that I talked about. I also have free ebooks and other goodies down there. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think would find it helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get up two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.